What are some creepy facts about human nature? If you happen to have brain injury, there is a condition that makes you unable to recognize objects around you, like you will see a fork the colors and the shape of it, but you can't know how to use it, if it's edible or not, etc. Pretty scary thing to imagine. I forgot how to read once, literally even things that I fully knew what they said, like the label of the coffee creamer on my desk. I couldn't read them. I saw the letters and the words, but I couldn't even recognize them as letters and words that scared the hell out of me. I can't imagine losing a higher function, like being unable to identify what a fork is and what it is used for. But the worst in my mind is people who can no longer recognize faces, learned memories, i.e. people 100% sure they remember things which actually never happened, but were told many times by media, memes, and others. I observed this for a certain episode which happened less than 10 years ago. Everyone whom I asked witnessed it, themselves personally, but they all clearly remember it. In a way, it was presented in memes and jokes, and not how they actually saw it happen. Look up by standard effect and mob mentality. There's another one I forgot the name of as well, that's similar, where people will do terrible things they are not comfortable with when a person in authority is giving them orders, slash saying it's okay. It's scary how easy it is for good people to do terrible things or ignore terrible situations. They themselves have the convenient power to fix. Your frontal cortex breaks you via your decisions. It's where all the critical thinking goes through the manual computer of dopamine pathways. Ever wonder why decisions are so crazy in your dreams or why it makes a little too much sense in the moment? Frontal cortex is off during REM. Grandma didn't abandon having a filter. With age, the decay of her frontal cortex is no longer preventing her from saying awful or embarrassing things. Pump your head in some kind of accident. Hope it wasn't the front, because if so, your chances of committing crime just rose more than 100%. After a back surgery, your organs might have been moved to perform certain parts of the surgery. The doctors don't move your organs back to their original place. This funny feeling you get after the surgery is your organs moving themselves back to their original place. Yes, they are capable of that. I don't know what this is called, but this is when I realized that human beings are extremely selfish and I was equally horrible and a part of this. I was in second or third grade around eight years old, I guess. So when school got over, it was the last day or something in all the kids in my class. About 40 to 50 kids ran out the door at the same time. One of the girls in my class fell over. Kids kept trampling over her. And some of us noticed that. But if we stopped to help our bend down, we would also get trampled over. So we just ran and left. I still feel so bad about that. Thankfully, nothing happened to her. And she just scraped her knees and elbow. But I feel so bad about it till today. There's another comment on here about internal voice. About that from my experience. I've noticed the people who think mostly visually, emotionally, and people who think by mostly talking to themselves and questioning. Everything do not have a very good chance of understanding each other. And one person might get sick of the other one because of how they think or how they like to have conversations. Example, someone who likes to ask lots of questions versus someone who wants to get the idea across with as little thought as possible. My example isn't the best, but I've had conversations about this with people. And as a person who thinks mostly visually, there are people who cannot understand why or how I think the way I do. My roommate likes to talk loud about what he's thinking while he's organizing or figuring something out, i.e., okay, so I put this here, then it will fit with that, and but it's always just little bits. It annoys the hell out of me. It's like having to read aloud every sign you pass to be able to understand it. Sociopaths just lack the empathy. People who are normal have empathy. But they have all of the traits of sociopath too. In fact, our empathy can drive a normal person to commit horrible crimes properly motivated. Our emotions can cause us to do things much worse than a sociopath. Pick someone's dog. Also, their kid punched their grandmother. Do those things and see people become something to fear. You aren't you. What you see when you look in the mirror.
is just a protective casing created by your parents mixing their DNA together. What you are is actually just your brain, eyes and nervous system. If you want to get more into it, your thoughts are just your brain, dictating what it thinks, thinks is right or wrong. In order to keep itself alive for as long as possible, human nature, the bystander effect is creepy as hell for context, I'm a psychologist. So this is a thing. Everyone in psychology will study at some point. Multiple studies were conducted to gather information on what it is and why people act the way they do. Long story short, if somebody was screaming bloody murder because they were being stabbed, shot, or even being kidnapped, it won't matter if it's happening in a large crowd or not. In most cases, if everybody sees it happening, but nobody does anything, everyone around will go on with their lives and not bother helping. The victim, there's around a 27% give, 1-3% to higher or lower chance that someone will react to the situation and intervenes. Statistically, that's very low. The fact that most people would do absolutely nothing while witnessing a horrific event is terrifying. The bystander effect is even stronger if nobody around has any association with the victim. The feeling of impending doom is a real legitimate medical symptom. It can precede a major event like heart attack, anaphylaxic cardiac arrest, seizure at sitting in the hospital. If you have a patient that's looking kinda iffy, and they mention feeling dread, feeling like something bad is about to happen, or other related signs, we take it very seriously, and I roll the code cart into their room right the fuck away. I am a former nurse. I always knew when I was going into a shift, that was going to go sideways at some point. I referred to it as my feeling of impending doom. Some parasites make humans more attractive, so they can pass on their parasites to the next person. Like bacteria, parasites can alter our behaviors to be more attractive and sociable to spread the parasites to others. Unlike bacteria or sudden infections that alter our behaviors, momentarily parasites sit dormant in our bodies, and it lives with us for all of our lives secretly pulling the strings. The uncanny valley phenomenon suggests that we've had to fear something in human history that looked human, but wasn't edit. I'm talking things that are almost human, but not quite. Corpses don't creep me out as much as duplicate horror or life like dolls. I figured this has to do with avoiding dead bodies. A body in a casket likely had work done by the mortician to make it look more lifelike, so the viewers don't get all weirded out. Once you are dead for a minute, your face looks very weird and mannequin-like dead bodies are disease vectors. So avoiding, or at least being, very cautious around them, it keeps you safe. Children are more or less sociopaths. We teach them empathy, kindness, and sharing. There are several psychologists that hold the belief that in a societal breakdown scenario, children will actually fare better than adults once they arm themselves because adults will have a harder time murdering another human. Meanwhile, children whose brains and emotional response centers have not fully formed will be much more able to mercilessly kill others for survival or supplies. We all have our flaws and quirks, but there are some aspects of human behavior that are just plain creepy. Here are some creepy facts about human nature that will make you shudder. We're drawn to the macabre, whether it's horror movies, true crime podcasts, or haunted houses. Many people have a fascination with the darker side of life. It's thought that this interest stems from our primal need to understand and prepare for danger. We can be cruel to animals. While many of us love our pets and consider them part of the family, there are also people who are capable of unspeakable acts of cruelty towards animals, from puppy mills to animal testing. It's a sad fact that some humans view animals as nothing more than objects to be used and abused or easily influenced by authority. Studies like the infamous Milgram experiment have shown that humans can be easily influenced by authority figures, even if it means causing harm to others. This is a disturbing reminder of how easily we can be manipulated. We are capable of extreme violence, while most of us would never dream of harming another person. There are those who are capable of extreme violence, from serial killers to war crimes. 
It's a chilly reminder that human beings can be both the best and the worst of creatures. The human brain has evolved to tell the difference between humans and humanoid creatures. For example, you see someone walking down the road and go, oh, that's a person. But your brain sets off alarm bells because something just isn't right about this person. From the last time I looked this up, scientists have no idea why we evolved to have this mechanism. But we do it's very disturbing. The eyes have a separate immune system than the rest of the body. If your body's immune system realizes your eyes exist, it'll attack the eyes and reject them from the body as it would a virus because the eyes are not only incredibly vulnerable to infection, due to the moisture. There are also a direct connection to our brain. This necessitates an additional layer of immune security. A separate immune system has several advantages. Firstly, pathogens cannot travel from the eyes to the body or the body to the eye. You wouldn't want a stomach virus to make you go blind. A normal immune response in the eye would mean swelling which would destroy the eye. The eye has several different layers of security specifically because they are so important. The call of the void. This occurs when humans are on high places like rooftops or cliffs and get the urge to jump. It's actually pretty common. I heard Dr. Carl on a podcast say something to the effect that your brain is constantly playing out hypothetical scenarios. And sometimes they slip out coming out as actual thoughts rather than your brain trying to be prepared for various situations. Our brains suck for modern culture. Every time you remember something, it's not 100% the same as the last time you remembered it. We process things serially, have health problems from sitting in a desk for work all day. We have emotions that make it difficult to be what is considered decent 24-7. I could go on, but basically, basically we are not made for our modern culture. We are one of the most violent things on earth yet. So social we legit will help even our enemies when needed. It's creepy because we will easily team up and go back to killing each other right afterwards. We are a death species and only really choose to grow or develop when our personal survival is threatened with actual extinction. The worst part is that when we do grow, we have an extremely short cultural slash societal memory. We are hyper tribal, easily divided and exploited by our own. I was taught in my youth the giving to the point of self-neglect was proper. If people needed it more than you, then I would be upset when my expectations of others to do the same fell. Short in regards to me and things I needed help with, it wasn't until years later. I realized that due to the laws of attraction, people who are generous givers mostly attract, people who are selfish takers. After some time, I realized I must be diligent about identifying and setting boundaries to those people before they bleed me dry the same analysis. I tried to align myself with like-minded people and found a nice slice of happiness with a good group of people. Being someone with autism has taught me that most people will tear you apart if you are different. It doesn't matter what it is. You have a trait that some consider a disease or undesirable. They will be unjust and biased against you and they will take every opportunity to discriminate against you. Some people pretty much justified bashing people on social media with honest opinions. They like to take comments out of context on social media and make outlandish theories, yet they just refuse to acknowledge it because they pick the narrative that suits them. While they ignore the truth, there's two parts. If we, as a species, do not make a very swift move towards truly long-term thinking, we are headed for, I won't say an extinction level event, but it'll certainly look that way while it's happening. And it doesn't matter whether the earth does it to us or if we do it to each other, one way or another, the human race is reaching the limits of its ability to survive its own selfishness. If we do not make that shift, we are very, very boned. We will not make that shift. Every Selene, the human body regenerates in about seven years. So nearing every seven years, you're an entirely new person. We still don't know 100% why we sleep. We know that we get tired and we feel better after sleeping. But we haven't seen a definite medical or biological need that sleep actually fulfills for our bodies. 